the name of the event, Fire in the Desert. Amen? Fire in the Desert. Connor was ringing with me for a while, for the last few months, when Pastor Ray invited me to come and speak. And you know, ever since I got here yesterday, everybody's been talking about the heat. Amen? The heat wave. I want to let you know, that's not the fire that we're looking for. Amen? That's right. The fire that we're looking for doesn't come from the temperature. You know? God can miraculously turn this pulpit into a real motorcycle for me. Amen? And it, and it could be the, the hopefully it would be the 26-inch wheel with the high, high uh, performance of motor, but if he wants to do that, that's still not the, the fire that we're looking for. Amen? The fire that we're looking for changes us from the inside out. Right? The fire that we're looking for gives us some confidence and some faith that we can live out this life in victory through our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? The fire that we're looking for brings us to a place of purpose and intimacy that only can really happen with God. And so, you know, as I was preparing this message, the Lord started to speak to me because, let's face it, we're, we're living in some unprecedented times. Amen? We're living in some times, and I don't know if it's because of social media, YouTube, the internet, but everybody has an opinion about something, right? Everybody has something to say about something. You know, you, you can you can go and, and um, turn on the TV and somebody is saying something. You know, whether it be the news itself, whether it be whether it be social media, whether it be the professional athletes that got something to say, something has some somebody always has something to say. And I'm trying to tell you that God has something to say to you. Amen? God has something to say to his people. And, and I come to tell you this, that God wants to say something to us in this generation. You know, I think about how our country is divided. And I'm not talking about just racially or socioeconomically. I'm not talking about those things. But we're divided in how we believe things ought to be. We have different value systems these days. We have different political preferences these days. And, and, and I want to bring this message to you that, that, the, that the Lord is entitled, how then should we conduct ourselves? Because many pastors will tell you that you just stay away from that stuff. Don't even talk about it. Just preach Jesus and you'll be fine. And you know, until the Lord started speaking to my heart, I believe the same thing. You know, we did everything. We just stayed away from the issue. We stayed away from, from, from the talks that, that, that would divide us. And you know, we would give out gospel tracts and we would, we would give out cold water in the name of Jesus, trying to lead people to Jesus Christ. But you know, there comes a time when people look at the Christians today and say, what do they think? What do they think? If you don't, if you don't agree with me, Make a comment on social media and see how many people respond. Amen? Some of the pastors know what that looks like, right? We'll say one thing, and all of a sudden, all the whether they're haters or, or they're supporters, they'll say something. People are still looking at the Christians today. And for us, whether we if we take a side uh, uh, of being a, a conservative or the right side, we're looked at as being intolerant, and we're looked at as being judgmental. If we take a, a, a side that is that is more left-wing, that we're, that we're looking at saying, you know what, you're, you're, you're just